In last week's episode, the weather started to turn. The unpredictable Yukon weather came with light rain showers, turning into sustained rain through the day and unleashing even more precipitation as I scrambled to set up camp before the first storm. Despite the dismal forecast for the following days, day 6 brought stunning nature views and abundance of wildlife with a total of 9 beavers. The land of Yukon provided once again with beautiful grazing, some escaping the pan, with others not being so lucky. Day 6 ended once again in, yup, you guessed it, scrambling to set up camp before the second storm. The next day started deceivingly innocently, with sunny spells and an opportunity to swim and dry gear out, but the Yukon weather was just coiling up to give its hardest blow yet. The sky turned dark and the clouds grew in power. I braced in my tent as a powerful hailstorm hit, with high wind speeds threatening to displace my canoe. With the aftermath of the storm, it was back to drying again. Welcome to the third and final episode. Good morning guys, it is day 8 and it is 7.30 a.m. Slept in a little bit. Um, it looks like a beautiful day at the moment, so better take advantage and break camp quick and get on the water so we can get some kilometers, but wow, it's looking stunning at the moment. Everybody, 8:45, and we're on our way. Let's go. Morning, Mr. Rotter. This creek is too shallow to fish it, but I'm gonna take the opportunity and load up on fresh water so I don't have to filter later. Freezing the water here, you can feel the massive difference in my feet when I step into this water as opposed to that one. This one's stinging and uh, numbing my feet immediately. This is got to be below five degrees. I don't know, today it's freezing. I'm loaded, I tell you, I'm loaded. I'm not sure you can see that, but my feet are like red from that. Absolutely freezing, man. That creek was Teractu Creek, which means Rocky Sharp Creek. It should be called Bloody Freezing Creek. And on today's drying show, we show you how to dry your fly on the fly. What do you call a woodpecker without a pecker? That would be a female woodpecker. <laughs> oh, it's so bad. Now that is a gorgeous blue sky. Just stretch the legs a bit and carry on. Now this is my kind of campsite. Oh man, I would have loved this one. It's huge and it's an island. Water on both sides. And it's flat, super open. Probably not buggy at all. Cut bank of loose material. Cut bank of loose material.
getting a bit of a northerly uh, headwind right now and we have a long stretch straight north now so that's gonna take a little bit of energy but that's okay just keep plugging away little at a time time to flip the page we've already covered 20 kilometers today doing quite well well i'm starting to see some uh, bigger cloud formations now and uh, that's a little warning that things are developing I'm gonna take advantage of the good conditions now and paddle hard to try and cover some distance there's a tiny stream coming in from this side and a uh, nice big eddy recirculating water here uh, might be a good place to fish so we'll give it a shot it's more like it i think let's try got myself a fish here First cast here. Pretty cool features of erosion, different rock hardnesses erode differently and so as it rains over many years it creates these formations I believe. Well winds are picking up, more cloud formations. I don't like the look of this, I don't like where this is heading. Yikes, I'm gonna find a good campsite for today. Got a burn here. You can see the, the burn trees and the new growth coming through. Nice ecological cycle there on its own. So even though it's sunny still, uh, it's quite windy at the moment, and I feel quite exposed here because I haven't seen many campsites around for the last, you know, 15 kilometers or so. So keen to find one and be well ahead of the game hopefully today so we're here guys at the confluence of the north big salmon river with the big salmon river that's the north big salmon river and this is the big salmon river yet more flow of water joining so this will feed the mighty yukon river itself there's a great high water camp over there i don't like being eaten alive by the mosquitoes so i'm gonna pass i'm gonna go for something more open nice choppy water here to be careful couple of rocks to avoid like this one here big standing wave right there See if we can slip into the eddy behind it. Yeah. <laughs> All right, no camping spots yet, but I saw on the map by paddling a little bit further than planned, there's a good sandy camp. I'm gonna go for it. Huge 
cut bank. So I've come down this small parade. It might be a good opportunity to catch some food. See if we can find the creek first. So this is Headless Creek, little creek, but it's too shallow to fish. And the water is too silty to, to gather straight, so we'll pass. Here we have, I believe, moose tracks. Big one. What is that? Crossing the water. Where? I just saw what I think was a bear. I'm pretty sure it was a bear because it was by the pace, by the way, it was moving and the shape it was crossing the water. Uh, wind's in my favor now, so we might be able to get closer. But he's hopefully he's not gone yet. If we don't start the him, we'll go super quiet now. No, he's gone. Where did he go? Damn, I missed it. I'll check the footage later, but I'm pretty sure it was a bear. It was terrible footage with the iPhone super far away. It was, you know, 10 seconds, him crossing. I saw him standing, you know, both four legs on the ground, um, on the bank, and then enter the water, and then, you know, swim across and come out the other side. That was so cool. That's the first pair I've ever seen in my life. That's so exciting. Beautiful animal. Wow, that's really made me happy. Hope you have a great day, bear. I think we're racing again against the clouds. Oh man, I'm exhausted. Let's sit up camp. Those clouds do not look very happy. Better get back to my canoe and sit up camp before we get rained on. I think it's coming. Tent set up. It's become like insanely hot, like weird hot that you know, it's just something has to give, you know? Rumbling. Not long to go now. Potential storm, barrel. Potential storm, barrel. What do we do with the barrel? We close the barrel. All right, everybody, it's 5 p.m. Been a long day. I didn't stop for lunch today, so this is kind of my lunch. I'm exhausted. I paddled quite hard today. I'm glad I didn't stop, because I'm here now, and now I'm ready. I'm not scrambling for the storm, you know?
Very little helps. Oh, there it is. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven kilometers. We'll be here soon, I guess. gonna get a lot closer than that so from today's sunshine we got a ton of power about three quarters of a whole battery bank which is a 20,000 milliamp so three quarters of that half a iPhone it was 50% and it got to 100% and a full uh, DJI battery, full charge, unbelievable. I think the storm might have missed us. Big day for kilometers today guys, 43. That puts the cumulative to now about 230. The speed of the river obviously helped and we didn't stop for lunch so we gave it today. So 135 kilometers left only, That's, that feels like so little now, you know? Mixed emotions about it, not, not exactly uh, overwhelmed with happiness that it's little distance left, you know? But I'm also happy that we've done, we've covered so much. The difference between wet and dry. Well, the storm didn't materialize, so we have an opportunity to have a little fire and warm up and uh, enjoy the rest of the evening. Good night, guys. Morning everybody, 9.30 a.m. I slept in today, time to get moving. All right, 11.20, very late start today. That's okay, we needed it, let's go. Come on, Bethany. Come on, old girl. And we are off. Let's go. Now we should be close to this uh, to this creek. Should be somewhere on river right, and maybe gather some fresh water and have a go at fishing. Either that's the creek, and it's uh, dried up, or I don't know where it is, but I can't really stop there. It's too dangerous to stop here with this fast current.
this coming section here says a great deal of new channel forming going on in section fast water some snacks and sweepers uh, we'll be a little extra attentive section might require some attention it's okay actually nothing too complicated Oh, sweet, lovely, lovely bit of white water. Coming here, this is an example of a snag that could be very easy to mess you up quickly. As we join this fast water, we want to lean downstream to create angle for the canoe there, just like that. Perfect. Man, that little white water section, that was one of the best bits of water of the whole trip. Really enjoy that. Just gonna have a few casts here. Could be a spot. Some slow water and uh, kind of like an eddy. Semi-deep. Water clarity is not great, but... Ooh! Got a massive, ch a massive grilling just chased it right up to the boat. Oof. All right, interesting. Fish on, fish on, baby. I think it's a little one. You know what? That's not that little. Oh man, that went good eating, man. Get in the boat, buddy. Uh, that will make part of lunch, baby. Nice. Opa. Okay. I have to clean the boat later because it's all gonna be like smell for bears, man. I'm gonna put him out of misery with a rock. All right, he's on a stringer. All right, let's see if we can get another one. Oh, getting a bite. Oh, missed it. Fish on. Fish on, baby. Fish on. Yes, sir. Feels like a good one. Feels like a good one, too. Oh, that's a big one. Good that's a big one. Whoa, whoa, that's a huge one. What the hell? Whoa, 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 that's a massive grayling. Yeah, okay, that's enough food, man. That's a massive fish. Okay, put him out of misery. That is a huge grayling. Massive, look at the size of that guy. All right. I'm gonna need to clean this canoe well as well, scrub it clean after. Mosquitoes killed my face there, but it was totally worth it. This is just for fun here now. We'll release if we catch anything. Oh my god, another bite. This place is crazy. Fish. What the heck, man. Another big one. Look at these guys. Whoa. <laughs> What a spot, man! What a spot, All right, buddy? I won't hurt you. Here. Ah, 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 that's the hook. That's the hook, idiot. Okay, bye, fish. I'm so stupid. Grateful that it's barbless. Comes right out, man. Another reason to fish barbless, not just for the fish, for you. If you're an idiot like me, you need barbless hooks. I almost did it again. What an idiot. Oops, tree. Okay. Find the spot to clean the fish. That's five minutes since we caught that fish. I'm stopping here to gut them and I'll keep them on the stringer, but that way they'll keep fresh for longer. All right, there it is. Big one has been gutted and clean. 
small one has been gutted and descaled as well because the little one I'm just gonna cook all of it whole I'm not gonna fillet that it's gonna be too much waste so good opportunity to give this a little clean try and remove that fish smell All right, there's all the fish cleaned. So that's the big one with the amount of fillets that I got. Really nice. I got about six pieces of that kind of size. So we're gonna cook that first. So we're gonna go ahead and just throw them in there. We're experimenting a little bit. Generous with the sesame oil because we'll be frying after too. In the pan she goes. I'm gonna power it. In the meantime, I'll bread the other ones. Oh yeah, look at that corridor. Wow. All right, moment of truth. Oh yeah, that's beautiful actually. Mm. Wow, this comes right off the bone. Check the fin out. Crispy, it's yummy actually, delicious. That's what's left of this guy. Pretty efficient way to eat. And here are the fillets. Screw it, we're not saving anything for tonight. I'm just gonna eat it all now. Mm -hmm. Yummy, yummy. Mm -mm -mm. Belly full of fish, baby. The, it doesn't get better than that, honestly. Freshly caught. I don't know how to describe it. it tastes not fishy at all and the meat is so soft and uh, tender it's just wonderful bravo grading and thank you for your lives i appreciate it last piece of fish yes Oh, bad. And for today's stormy outlook, uh, actually looks all right. Despite this mean looking cloud, everything else, what's coming beyond that I can see looks okay. So, so far, so good. I think the sun should be out long enough to warrant a swim. Gonna clean this stinky stuff up and uh, take advantage, do some laundry. Whoa, Whoa the current's strong here. <laughs> Wonderful lunch stop. It is almost four o'clock. Not gonna have a big uh, paddling day today. Wanna take it relatively easy, have a rest day sort of thing. But yeah, let's find the camp and enjoy this beautiful wilderness.
leaving the canoe there and exploring this for a potential campsite. Moose tracks over here, two the hooves, very different than the bear. The bear is round. Look at this one. <laughs> the moose came from the water. He crossed probably from there. Tons of tracks, tons. Look at this. Should be on the lookout. Maybe we get lucky and we see something. Absolutely boiling right now. Before I even set up the tent, I'm just gonna go in the water with all my clothes. It's super hot. I need it. Yes. Oh, feels so much better now. Now I can operate. Let's do it. I knew I would wear this hat one day. We are right here, very, very close to the confluence of the Big Salmon River and the Yukon River. Right there, touching distance. In the meantime, we are taking advantage of the sun. The solar unit of our power generation company is doing great. In fact, it's the only unit and it's doing very well. And tent is set up. Fly sheet is just drying before I put it on. Ventilating all oh, my stuff. It was dry, but nice to let it breathe for a bit and get rid of any last bits of dampness. And that is our camp. Looking good to me. Right, all the camp chores are kind of done, so I want to go on a fishing expedition. Come on, let's go. Come, let's go. I'll bring you with. Looking for areas of slower water and that over there could be interesting. It's possible to get snagged here because there's some trees, down trees here. So I try, try to keep reeling relatively fast. Oh no, we got a snag. I knew it. Damn it. So stupid. I'm going to get in the canoe, get the rod, paddle this way up there and pull from the rod there and hopefully be able to canoe back. First we're gonna try and see how we can go upstream here. For this I'm using the Explorer Plus from Bending Branches. This is a lot more powerful and for what I'm gonna be doing I'm gonna need that power. It might be a bit of hard work but let's go for it. It's not about the lure, it's about the pride, it's about not giving up. That lure represents more than more than just a piece of metal. It represents spirit and fight. Oh, That's not good. That's not good at all. Oh, no, it's not even above that stupid branch, little one. Get off. Get off. I'm free from that one. Yeah, it's a goner. Okay. We tried, guys. We tried. That's what matters. Back to camp. Upstream. With no lure.
absolutely amazing day. Highlight of the day were those beautiful grayling, huge in size and made great eating. I need those calories and uh, yeah, grateful that Yukon Wilderness provided once again. It's an absolute privilege to be here. I've said it before, but I have to say it again. It's one of the best trips of my life, really. I'll, I'll never forget this. Today we did 21 kilometers and we're right at the confluence of the Big Salmon River with the mighty Yukon River. So tonight will be our last night on the Big Salmon. So with that, good night and I'll see you tomorrow for day 10. That mosquito here is so fat that you can't even recognize it's a mosquito so full of blood. Not a cloud in the sky, baby. That's what I'm talking about. So the Yukon River is known to be a little bit more silty. So I'm gonna take advantage and uh, fill up on uh, as much water as I can from here from the Big Salmon. And that will give me a head start at least. Job done, three liters of fresh water. So I've set up my uh, solar panel here at the back. I barely have anything to charge. Everything is on full charge. Complete energy surplus, incredible. Well, hello neighbor. It is day 10 and it's 10 a.m. and it's time to get going. Let's do it. Right ahead is the mighty Yukon River. Big salmon no more. For those of you that don't know, the Yukon River is a huge river and it runs over 2,000 miles, I believe. It starts going north and then it starts going west and it crosses the whole of Alaska. Salmon basically swim all the way up the Yukon to spawn. Pretty amazing journey that they take on. Mighty Yukon, here we go. So looking for Walsh Creek right now. It should be on river right. See if we can do a bit of fishing. Looks like this is the creek here. Visibility is like less than 30 centimeters i can barely see my lure this isn't gonna work for fishing
Oh, there comes a big one. Here. Could be interesting for fishing or at least getting higher quality water. I'll show you a little rough comparison of the Yukon River water with that stream water. So this is what the Yukon one looks like. And this is what the stream one looks like. I have no problem drinking straight from this water at all. Beautiful. That's the mouth of the creek. And if you follow that creek up, you can see that this creek comes from well over 1,200 meters up. In 1940, Lawrence Sear and Boyd Gordon built this small dredging whitehorse, then floated it downriver for a summer of gold mining. Using true Yukon ingenuity, they improvised the dredge from a stripped-down caterpillar tractor, a car motor, and various homemade parts. The bucket line was used to dig up the gravels, which were screened by the rotating trommel, and then sluiced, leaving the gold-bearing concentrates. Although the partners mined 72 ounces of flour, or fine gold, from the river bars in 20 days, they did not return the following season, and the dredge has remained here ever since. Boiling today. So hot. <coughs> all right, I think it's time for lunch. And this island has my name written all over it. Some water boiling here and we're gonna use the rest of the pesto because it's going funky so pasta pesto it is we're gonna save take some of the water actually to make a coffee later pasta water coffee that's okay some extra starch in there why not that'll be for the coffee just gonna use all the pesto nice and rich lots of calories cheers guys Pasta never disappoints, huh? And here's my pasta water coffee. Tastes either the same or slightly better than normal. That's a bit of a view, eh? We're looking for this creek here. See if we can catch some fish. Not ideal for fishing, I think. 
full pass on this one. This hillside is just so beautiful. Naturally planted, mixture of rocks, shrubs, trees, and it's complete natural form. Today's gonna be a big kilometer day, I think. Just wanna keep going today. All right, just found a little eddy here. There's a stream uh, in front of us. Uh, still looks a little bit fast and not very clear to fish, but give it a go. I think the current's too fast. All right, no fishing, but tied the canoe over there and at least let's explore the creek. A little bit silty, but definitely coming from up high, the water is freezing. Immediately I can feel it on my feet. Must be like 10 degrees difference between this water and the water from the Yukon. Let's check out this uh, potential camp. It's pretty nice here. I don't think it's going to get better than this at the moment. Uh, 6 p.m. and pretty exhausted actually. I'm keen to stop so let's take it. Made it to camp, but before we set anything up, I need to cool down. It's so hot, I can't even think. So, quick swim and then I set up camp. Yay! So much better. I feel amazing now. It's almost 8 p.m. This is our view from our campsite. Absolutely gorgeous. We have some stuff drying over here and there and uh, continuing to generate power. Here we've set a little chill area in case the bugs come out. And this is gonna be the sleeping area over here with the amok hammock. And we should have pretty nice views. All right, everyone, that concludes day 10. We did just over 50 kilometers today. So good going. Obviously the, the flow helps a lot. With that, we're gonna have a little cast, see if we can catch a fish. And I'll see you tomorrow for day 11. Good night, guys.
Good morning, everybody. Welcome to day 11 of this epic Yukon Wilderness Adventure. I slept really well yesterday. I think it's the best sleep I've had in the whole trip. I don't know what it is about the hammock. Either you feel a little cradled or um, cocooned inside, but off the ground, but it just it gives you this feeling of comfort and I slept solid throughout the whole night. A little chilly this morning. I'm gonna go get our food that we stashed a little bit further from camp. Good morning, Mr. Bear. Hope you had a good sleep. I had a great sleep, thanks for asking and thanks for not taking my food. Such a kind bear, so considerate. The bear comes, take it out, slide that safety off. You get about 10 to 15 seconds of this, that's it. Make sure that cap is, that safety's on, so I don't spray myself in the freaking face. Who goes the bear? Oh, that's too slow, I'm dead. Who goes the bear? <laughs> that was good, that was a quick one. What's that, you want some pepper spray bear? <laughs> in the face. That was a good one too. They don't call me the pepper spray for nothing bear. Got you bear in the face again. There's a bear. Oh, I'm dead, I'm dead, I'm dead. Oh, took too long. And the sun is rising there in the east. Absolutely gorgeous. Here's the last bit of my beautiful creek water that I gathered yesterday. No, I need another creek. Bethany, make it up to you. I'm sorry. I said I was sorry. Eesh. Everything has its order. I'm not obsessive, okay? Bait and sponge, her mighty royal highness fishing rod. That's how we do it. Good morning. 63 and a half kilometers left to Carmax. I think we're gonna break it up into two days. Really now the rain is gone. It's gonna be a fine, 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 fine sunny day, something like that. It's gonna be a fine, 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 sunny, shiny day, <laughs> something like that. Just had a thought that I would like to share. I bought my first canoe about three years ago. I had never paddled a canoe before in my life. You know, fast forward to now, I'm doing this solo here. So the point is, if, if you like this sort of thing, if you think you can do it, you can do it. Nothing is scarier than the anticipation. I was more scared in my sofa at home thinking about this trip than doing this trip here. If I can do it, you can do it. You can do it. How incredible to think that this river runs all the way through Alaska for about 2,000 miles all the way to the sea. Just over here we have the confluence of the Little Salmon River with the mighty Yukon River. As we approach the last stage of the trip, I'm getting freaking emotional, man. 
I'm gonna go home when the time comes with a little bit of Yukon, quite a big piece of Yukon in my heart. That over there looks like a pretty good stream. Let's go for it. Maybe we can slip into the eddy here. We still have the drone somewhere up in the air, so we gotta, <laughs> we gotta bring it back to us, but at least it'll be a good place to catch it here. Nice and muddy here. Gonna explore this creek. Look at that fish. Guys, can you see that fish? It looks like a pike. Try not to scare him. Oh, he's moving. He's on the move. He's on the move. There he is. You see him there? He's waiting for food to come straight, flushing down, straight into his mouth with minimal effort. Try and get the camera in the water, see if we can get some footage of it. I'm gonna put something small, something delicate, see if I can get them to bite. All right, Mr. Pikey, it's on, baby. It's on like Donkey Kong. You hungry boy, you know you're hungry. Where is he? Where is he? Where are you, Pike? I wanna catch you, Pike. Where are you, Mr. Pikey? There, I'm gonna cast beyond him, try and cast lightly beyond him and put the lure right in front of his face. Hopefully he'll chase it. That's behind him. Fish on! Yeah! He went for it! There he goes! Yeah! He went for it! <laughs> First cast fish! Yes, sir! Yes! Oh! Nice pike! <laughs> Work like a charm, baby! Work like a charm! Okay, we're gonna release him. Release him over here so he doesn't spook. He doesn't spook his friends. We can still catch his friends, maybe. Here we go. It's gonna go right, right in front of him. Here he goes. Ooh. Come on, Pikey. Oh, he's a picky one. This one. Here we go. Yes. Oh, isla. Yeah, yeah. He's moving. Oh, oh, he's chasing, he's chasing, he's chasing here. Oh, he chased right up to me. Oh, oh, I got a chase there. Here. Oh. Right, I'm doing a blind cast here. Might as well give it a shot. Okay, something. Yep, chase. Yes. Fish on, baby. Oh, the. Why is the. The drag so so loose. Ah, oh, the oh, he cut me off, idiot. So I'm gonna add 
a little bit of a 16 pound uh, fluorocarbon. I have my six pound line going into the swivel and then from the swivel onwards, we have 15 pound fluorocarbon leader. Let's try it. Could be quite good. That's gonna go right over him. Oh, go uh, take a bite. Yes. Oh, fish on. Yes, sir. Oh, that's a good one. Oh, that's a good one. Oh, that's a feisty one. Feisty, feisty fish. Oh, that's a good one. Beautiful fish. Come, buddy. Oh, big fish. No, 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 no. No, 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 no. Don't, don't, don't do it. Get in the net. Oh, wow, that's a big pike. <laughs> wow. Awesome. Yes, sir. The leader did the trick there. On the Rigged and Ready X5, man, this rod does it all. Thank you, Rigged and Ready, you made my trip. See if we can get a look at this fish. Good pike fish. What a beauty pike. Let's release him, yeah? Come on, buddy. You gotta go back to the water now. Hi fishy, thank you. All right, now it's water mission. No sleeping on rocks now. This is gorgeous, man. What a place. Stunning. Yes, water rich again. I can see that this creek comes from a few lakes. There could be beaver activity there. And so Jardia is a possibility. So I'm still gonna filter the water, but at least much better quality water than the rare one. I don't know if you, see, you can see that, but there's a crack running through the middle. Tiny crack, that's where the fly emerges. Pretty cool. This is a burn, I guess, from 1995. So that's 28 years. It takes significantly longer than I expected for the land to regenerate. That kind of makes sense because if you think about how short the seasons here are for growth, they have a few months to, of sunshine and water and warm temperatures for growth, and then it's just like shut down again. Minus 40 and all that. That burn happened 28 years ago and it looks like it's just a few bushes in there, you know, and that puts everything else into perspective. When you see spruce trees that are medium sized for here, they could be quite old actually. Ah uh, man, catching the drone there. I overshot my hand a little bit and I hit the blade and it's uh, sliced my finger open a little bit. Rather than plaster, I think I'm gonna use one of these guys, a blister thing, you know? Because my hands are gonna be constantly in the water, in and out, a plaster just won't do, but this might keep it sealed. Really gotta get that wipe in there. I might wait for it to stop bleeding actually. It did stop on its own before. It's not the finger you're thinking of. This is a different finger. Over, like a wrap, burrito sort of thing. Yeah, I'm pleased with that. And I still got functionality and I can, I can put my hand in the water probably without getting water in. Yes, sir. Oh yeah, that's what I'm talking about. Yes, sir. Two dangerous things out here. One is to be complacent, as in reaching for a drone carelessly. And two is when you rush. You're stepping in the stream and you want to hop to the next rock quickly. With the sun beating heavy now, no choice but protection, baby. Nice. 
nasty headwind at the moment, stopping me dead in my tracks. Squash sweet corn casserole. Something like that. Yum. About 3.30 p.m. and 10 kilometers to our camp spot for the night. All right, everybody, almost 5 p.m., change of plans. I checked the site, I didn't really like it, so I'm gonna keep moving. I'm gonna push a little bit further and see if I can find something better. Nice headwind here. Stiff. Good thing the Yukon has so much flow. This is our best bet before we hit Carmax basically. Fair camp. Just staying on this shore. Trying to find signs of a camp. Should be somewhere up here. Still nothing. I feel like I passed the point in the map where it's supposed to be. I'm not seeing anything here. Either I missed it or it's overgrown and nobody's used it little marking there a white tent marking man easy to reach that okay so water access sucks but maybe the campsite itself might be better all right let's go take a look just gonna tie the canoe to this tree over here and then we'll check it out see what we're working with oh dear Absolute shenanigans here, huh? Fair is a overstatement, I think. Whoa, whoa, is that eagle? It's an opening here. To be honest, the more I stay, the more I like it. It kind of feels nice and cozy. And I like the, the eagle. It's a good sign for me. Yeah, it's really nice and cool in here for sure. So on a day like today, that's appreciated. This will be home for tonight. We'll do just fine. One thing I'm not gonna do today is have a fire. This whole place is like a tinderbox. 
with lots of uh, dead wood everywhere and pine cones and not necessary at all to take the risk. I'm perfectly content without a fire. Ah, you mother effer. Ah, the mosquitoes I won't miss. For dinner, having a vegan chili with beans and uh, soya beans with whole wheat tortilla wrap. Mm -hmm. Day 12, 9 a.m. Here we go, let's finish this, guys. We done it 375 kilometers 12 days what an adventure i'll never forget this thanks for watching and oh yeah one more thing what's it gonna be bear bear spray or water flosser in the eye don't mess with me bear don't mess with me Peace out.